Okay, you're watching New Car Spin. We are in the 2019 Volkswagen Jetta GLI 35th anniversary. Automatic transmission, cl auto climate control, a useless touchscreen stereo, <laughs> and a passenger. Hey! Derek Shakey from There Will Be Cars. I'm your host, yeah. Brian Grant. And it's 10.30 in the morning. And we are in Dallas. And we are heading to Austin. And we have to be there by 2 o'clock because Derek needs to be at the airport. So, yep. Uh, I've done a Jetta GLI road trip before in the previous gen from Dallas to Austin, or maybe it was Austin to Dallas. We're going to figure out what this thing can do, what the differences are between the generations. Fuel economy I'm not so interested in, but we'll see. I'm not going to reset this, but we've done 15 miles in 41 minutes, averaging 22.4. So I'm going to try and get that up to 25, and we're going to see if we can get to Austin by 126. 11, 12. Yeah, <laughs> we have to basically. Yeah. So, uh, in the meantime, we'll be talking about this new generation. I do want to say that I have driven the new Jetta on a racetrack when it came out with someone from Volkswagen. Hey, Nicole. <laughs> hey. Uh, and I was kind of like hesitant about the new Jetta because I didn't like the design, but I drove it and I'm like, oh yeah, it's a Jetta. It feels like a Jetta. If you closed your eyes as a passenger, of course, and, uh, tried to figure out what you're in, you'd easily know that this is a Jetta. So despite how it looks, it's, it's all new. It's bigger. It's got a kind of like a fastback look to it. It's definitely not your traditional Volkswagen look, but it feels and drives like a Volkswagen. So especially the Jetta. So we're going to take it down to Austin. I'm going to have to flog it a little bit. So I'm going to have Derek hold the camera while we do that. Uh, we do have different drive modes, just like in the GTI press that button, you get the screen control, we're going to go for it. <laughs> Here we go! Of course we're in the city so we can't do much. Uh, this has the same engine now as the GTI, 252 horsepower EA888, I don't know, let's see. Well, I don't think Volkswagen is publishing horsepower stats on the window stickers anymore either. No. But it's supposed to get 32 on the highway. We'll see. Yeah, and this <laughs> thing does cost 28,985 all in. With uh, this is the 35th anniversary edition, so I don't know where this falls in the pecking order of the trim. But there are no options on here other than such tiny print. Maybe you can read it. Yeah. <laughs> the color for $200, I think it is. Let's see. It is a cool color. I like it. It's like Battleship Gray. Yeah. Pure gray with uh, black roof. That's a $295 option. And then you got yeah, the 7-speed DSG. But that's no charge. Yeah, and I do not like the fact that there's no sunroof. I need a sunroof in a Jetta. Like, German cars need a sunroof. <laughs> so I feel like, I don't know, trapped, especially with the black headliner. Exactly, I was just thinking that. I'm not a fan of black headliners. I know that, like, Audis and stuff, when you get the sport package, it comes with it, but you get a sunroof, so you kind of feel a little bit less cramped or trapped. And everything in here is black. We got our t traditional GLI slash GTI red stitching on all the leather and we do have the new Jetta look in here with the trim like a carbon fiber-ish look and I like the fact that it's not trying to be carbon fiber, it's trying to be sporty looking trim, it's very masculine so I don't feel like I'm being uh, like fake in any way, it's like a, it's like a gym bag in here, and it's really cool because it's it feels clean and it feels like it's going to last the test of time just the way it the way it, it's put together. And we do have like the interior trim lighting at night, which uh, I'm not gonna show you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Unless we go through a really long tunnel. Yeah. Well that's a lot of delay there. Gear change. Okay. We have blind spot monitoring and I'm trying to figure out. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what I hate right away. And I'm gonna use the word hate. Because this makes no sense, and I've pointed this out in other Volkswagen models, and I don't know why they do this, and that is the audio. So when you are, uh, hopefully it's still recording. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So when I want to change the tone or the balance or the fader, uh, the bass, treble, I'd have to go to setup, but it won't let me do it while I'm driving. And to me, like that's the stupidest thing. If, if I need to change the bass or the balance in any other car, in the history of the world, I've been able to change it while driving, but not in the Volkswagens. And that is the stupidest move they've ever made. Uh, I really wish they could get rid of that stupid decision. Uh, also, this one doesn't have satellite radio, so I'm a little confused as to why they got rid of that. The GLI, of all things, is like a driver's car, and I think in a driver's car, you want a great stereo, you want great seats, you want great headlights, you want... Um, two other things which this doesn't have <laughs> let's see that would be rear wheel drive this is obviously front wheel drive not available with all wheel drive uh, and I've driven this car before at an event and I, I think I basically said this is like a larger version of a front wheel drive Audi A3 it feels like it, it delivers power that way and yes it has this Volkswagen style delay when you want to pass somebody but I think the handling outweighs the, the uh, drawbacks of all that. Unfortunately, right now we have a little bit of traffic, so I can't like take these turns at high speed. However, it is German, so we can do some Autobahn-style, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, uh, Autobahn storming. So we're gonna, we're just gonna fly. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, it clears up enough to do that. Yeah, I'm not really in the driving position for it. These seats don't have lumbar adjustment, and they're supportive, and they feel okay. They feel more like the golf seats. They're still not perfect. They have a lot of pitch to them, and I cannot adjust that. And it's totally manual on the driver's side, but this lack of lumbar really uh, drives me crazy right now because I always still feel like I'm insisting that there's a button or something I'm not seeing, and I'm reaching for it, and it's just not there. Of course, with the manual, I have, or the automatic, sorry, I have the control to go into a sport mode, but there is a delay here to kick it down. Uh, we're going to use that. Brakes are nice and strong. <laughs> Thank goodness. Yeah, you can't see that on camera, but we we are using the brakes. We're using everything today on this lovely Saturday to get what we're trying to get. We're doing, like, the world's shortest cannonball run. <laughs> Dallas to us. <laughs> yeah, the, the Texas, the Texas Blitz, this is called. <laughs> um, even though this is a German car, it's made in Mexico. There's nothing wrong with that. I've owned a Jetta before, and I've had a lot of success with it as far as reliability and build quality. And I kind of feel it and see it here. This car has 6,600 miles on it. No rattles, no creaks. Brakes are good. And that that's a a testament in and of itself because these press cars lead hard lives. Yeah, yeah, we drive them worse than rental cars because they're self-insured. <laughs> um, not saying that we do it all the time, but but in extreme cases, we, we do like to, uh, we have to test the limits so that we know what we're talking about. And some are a little more enthusiastic about that than others. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> So we, we can do that. Okay, we are in sport mode. The drive mode here is in sport mode. So we get the extra exhaust sound. We get better throttle mapping. And we're just going to drive. So from here on out, we're going to do some some uh, uh, different clips that I'm going to have to edit. Normally I don't edit, but in this case, it's a three-hour drive. And I wish I could give you a three-hour video, but... We're on our way. So let's go for it. Ah, uh, you're going to do it? Oh, good, okay. I love the sound. There's a little bit of wind noise. There's definitely some tire noise in here. Um, you kind of expect that in a sportier car. And we just came out of an SUV from the other direction, so the, uh, the being lower to the ground feels a lot more stable to me but we, we obviously hear a lot more of the road and we're not as susceptible to crosswinds and things being that we're lower so I think we're going to have a lot of fun here you can go ahead and focus on the road and kind of see like, what we have to battle today it's not that bad today but we're like heading south 
on Interstate 35, so I think we'll make it. Uh, let's see. Please like, comment, subscribe. Always check out There Will Be Cars. Derek's channel is really cool. Um, right now, we're just going to make our way past Interstate 20 and then head over to Waco. And we will catch up with you in a while. So we are here on Interstate I, Interstate I, I-35, and we just passed Interstate 20. And one thing I'll tell you is the ride here is very, I would just say bumpy. <laughs> it's rough, it's not smooth, and that's because we're in sport mode. And we do have DCC, which is dynamic chassis control or something like that. So that means we have an, an adjustable suspension. So I'm gonna take it out of sport mode, hit the mode button here, and then go into comfort. Yeah, and I feel an immediate difference. Do you feel anything? Oh, yeah, I hear it. You hear it? Okay. Yeah, well, yeah. You don't have that raspy sound, and then, yeah, it's... I didn't think it was all that bumpy in sport. I mean, I, 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 I felt worse. Uh, but, yeah, in comfort mode, you, it definitely uh, makes it a lot more gentle. I feel it right here, right now. You don't feel that? No, I feel the bumps and the responsiveness, but it's not terribly rough to me. Okay. I, I think that's just a great feature to have similar to an air suspension where no matter what part of town you're in you can you can change your ride quality and you're not a hostage to one setup this is always a very good thing to have I don't like this button though because I've complained about this in the GTI and the Golf R like you have to go through this button and cycle and then when you want custom mode you can't you can't adjust custom mode while you're driving so you have to pull over, stop, whatever. And I, I wish there was more than one custom mode. If it's not that hard to program two or three custom modes. And then I also wish there was a bank of buttons just to be able to adjust specific things. And I said that about the golf and people hated me for it. But I'm right. Just admit it. I'm right. I know what I'm talking about here. I want to be able to just fly through. I want to keep it in sport mode. I want the sport exhaust. But I want the comfort suspension on the freeway. And you think I'm crazy, but that's what I want. I want that. I don't care if you don't want that. I want it. But I can't do it while I'm driving because I can't edit custom mode. But if I had, like, custom one, two, and three, like, highway, driveway, uh, canyon, I'd, I'd be able to do that. And I, it doesn't take much to add that. And I wish they could do that. Also, uh, yeah, so far this thing's pretty fly. I like... I like the trunk space. I'll show you that, maybe. I don't know. Maybe not. Because uh, we have to stop for that. And we don't have time. We ain't got time for that. Nobody got time. I have heated seats, but they're not vented. We do have this this cloth setup. I don't know if you sh can show the back seats, but it's not, not that cringy. Like, the GTI had, like, a cringy cloth. And I'm kind of tired of that old vintage look in a new car in 20, 2019, almost 2020. I think we need to kind of get past vintage on new and we just need to go new and extreme new going forward and the Jetta layout the vents below the screen and, and the uh, the material usage here it's definitely upscale for the previous Jetta and kind of reminds me of my fifth generation Jetta that I had although that was a diesel which we're not going to talk about <laughs> uh, I do wish the stereo was better and I've always wished that in Volkswagen's so far, so good, though. So we're going to continue to head this way, and I'll check in with you when we get to Waco. All right, well, such is life. We are encountering a bit of a traffic issue. It's my, it might be temporary. I think it is. Yeah, a little bit of an issue here. Not my problem, so I don't care. I don't know why people slow down and bottleneck for it. It's not your problem. Go. Live your life, right? Stop rubbernecking. Yeah, it makes no sense. But before we get to Waco, I do want to talk about storage capacity. And uh, one thing I noticed is that Derek brought along a bottle that he couldn't fit in any of the cup holders or door pockets of the Kia Telluride, the 2020 model. But here in the Jetta, we're able to fit a one and a half liter water bottle from Trader Joe's. Yeah, it's giant. Yeah. 
So that says a lot here about storage capacity. If you look over here, I'm able to stick a water bottle here. We have two cup holders down here. Um, I've got space for two water bottles. I've got a smart water here, one and a half liter as well. And then I can line up literally water bottles all the way through this map pocket on the door. So probably another three or four bottles. And then the problem I have is this center armrest because it's nice and padded and it's got a texture on it, but it's, it's too low for me. And if I lift it, like typical Jetta style, I'd expect it to have intervals to click and have different height adjustments, but I don't have that. It's just a door to a bin. And Plenty that, of storage space, though. Yeah, there's more storage, but it's not... It's not... The, the armrest doesn't slide out or anything. And I know in the previous Gen Jetta I had, we had a manual handbrake, and the, the armrest and the handbrake would kind of, like, collide with each other if you were to have the handbrake up and the armrest up and out. But now we have an electronic parking brake in here, but I still don't have an adjustable thing. So they did the complete opposite. Like, now they have room to do an adjustable armrest, but there's no manual parking brake to get in the way but they spent money it's almost like hey we spent too much money on this electric brake so we can't afford to give you an adjustable armrest <laughs> and this is a gli so i would figure this one is like a more upscale version off the base and i've driven the jetta s manual and it didn't have an adjustable armrest and i've driven the the sel premium and it didn't have an adjustable armrest and that was the top of the line for the 1.4 liter version and this is the 2-liter performance version, and I still don't have an adjustable armrest. What's up with that, Volkswagen? Come on, Nicole. All right, I'll catch up with you in Waco. Uh, wait, is that more traffic? Seems like it's slowing down a little bit. Okay. Well, that just means we have to work a little harder, and it's going to be easy because this thing doesn't have to, you know, it's not a lot of work in here. It's pretty effortless, so... We'll get to Waco. It's 11.22 right now, and we'll catch up with you in Waco. We'll figure out what time I get there by. I'm going to put the number at 11.40. We'll see. I don't even know how many miles it is because this doesn't have navigation. I'm sure we have Apple R, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, but I, I don't bother plugging in my phone because I'm actually using it for the camera. All right, we'll catch up. Okay, we are in Waco. You can see Baylor Stadium here, and then these uh, things you've probably seen on that TV show that deals with those people from Waco that do the house thing. Uh, I forgot what it's called. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about, with Chip and Joanna Gaines. Yeah, I don't know the name of the show anymore, but we're here, we're in traffic, it's 11.46, so we're five minutes behind, and oh yeah, I've seen that car before. So yeah, we're, we're where we were. <laughs> basically. And we we have stop and go traffic. And I'm looking here, and I never realized this before, but I don't think we have radar cruise. We only have blind spot, rear traffic, and front assist. So cruise control is just standard cruise. There's no stop and go. There's no self self regulation on, on that. So it's not really loaded. No nav, no satellite radio, no radar cruise, no vented seats, no sunroof. I'm going on and on and on about a list of things this car doesn't have. But what it does have is a lot of cre credential for uh, easy freeway manipulation. <laughs> Something like that. I mean, you've seen the speeds we've been able to reach. I don't know what kind of tires are on this car. But I know, Derek, you've reviewed this car before. Where, where did you put this review? What, oh, um, a wet outlet? Yeah. On uh, AutoNation Drive. Okay. So, did you talk about the tires? Um, let's see. Oh, you know, sorry. Uh, I didn't... I don't think I put this on AutoNation Drive. I think it might be on Amazon. Um, I don't remember really going into the tires. Okay. Um, but I do recall, you know, there being obviously some tire noise. Um... Yeah, but, but they, they feel very smooth and linear, and they grip, and they're, they're like, drama-free. It, it seems like even when we put our foot down from a stop, it's, it's working it out. There's no tire screech. There's no, like, it's doing a lot of work, but I don't feel it working hard. The car is just kind of taking care of it and making it seem like it's not a big deal. 
Yeah, and that's definitely one thing about this car that stood out to me, especially relative to the 2017 GLI that I drove uh, two or three years ago, is this car is very buttoned down, very mature, very planted. Uh, unfortunately, you know, I felt like it was missing that fun factor, that tossability that the last one had, but, you know, this does feel more grown up, more sophisticated, has more power, and uh, definitely a lot uh, more rooted. But yeah, you, you, I felt it was missing that sort of playfulness. Yeah. I, I, I don't know uh, if you're prepared for me to say this, but I see a, a huge parallel, and this is weird, but I see a huge parallel between this and the Lexus GSF. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I haven't driven the GSF for, you know, a week. I mean, I've driven it maybe a lap or two here and there, but... Uh, okay. Well, I mean, I did a road trip video in it, and if you haven't seen that video, please like and subscribe that, too. <laughs> uh, what I'm trying to say here is, this is the equivalent for the Jetta as the GSF is to the GS. Hmm. It's like... It's like their balls-out version of their best interpretation of what you can get out of a sedan from a performance perspective. And they they did put a lot of effort into this. It's different from the previous generation, but that's just kind of how it's, it has to be. It has to be different so that you can experience something a little different. Whether it's better or worse, that's your, that's your, it's subjective, right? But I feel like this is a little larger, a little bit more refined than the previous kind. It looks a lot different. But I feel like this performs the same as the previous one. I don't. I don't really feel a difference hmm. oh, okay. between the generations. But I, I do feel like the way we're driving today, and, and the need that we have, it's like this is the four-cylinder front-wheel drive version of a GSF. Mm-hmm. And that's hard. To, it's hard to wrap the mind around that. But go watch those videos that I did, and then. And then you'll kind of get an idea for what what this does compared to what that GSF does. I mean, you put your foot down, you order up some power, and you go. And I, I think that's that's what's important here. We're getting a, a, a $30,000 $30, version of what you would expect in a GSF, which is like $90,000. So you can get three of these or one of those, but the reality is you're getting a, a sedan that normal people would probably just drive and tinker around with in town, but there there is a special spicy hotter version, which is this one, that you can go ballistic with, and it's kind of like an underdog sleeper kind of thing, but people who know, know what you have, and that's a special aspect to it. So now we're leaving Waco, we're heading towards Austin, and we will uh, catch up with you eventually. And I think at this rate, we're going to catch up with an airplane off in the distance. Yeah. Yeah, we're working on it. <laughs> uh, speed is not a factor. It's it's more or less like time and space. So, hopefully there's no traffic when we get to Round Rock. Oh, uh, yeah, we'll see. That's where the outlets are. It's not your favorite <laughs> outlet, but that's where the outlets are. <laughs> I, I like my outlets a little more deserted and uh, hopeless. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're uh, we're about ten miles from Temple, so we're past the halfway point. And looking at the trip computer here, we are averaging twenty six point two mpgs, which means we've gone down. And we've been in comfort mode and normal mode, and we've been like in this mode of just going along, and then a little bit of braking, slowing down for traffic, and then getting around it, passing it. Foot, a lot of foot action here, a lot of lane changing, because people are uh, in Saturday mode, and they probably don't ever do this all the time, so what I'm going to do is change this back into sport mode, because when we when we got up to like 27, we were in sport mode, I think, so we're going to see if sport mode enhances the fuel economy, which sounds weird, but it's possible, it would hold gears longer, so when you pass, and then like ease off the accelerator, you kind of like gain, oh look, a Kia Stinger. <laughs> Almost in the same color as this car. Oh, yes. Kind of interesting. Anyway, 
sport mode it is. We'll see if we can get higher than 26.2. Uh, I was shooting for 30. I don't think that's possible anymore. All I do know is that saying that this is like the Lexus GSF of Jetta's is kind of like a huge compliment. And that's where I'm going to stand. I'm going to keep it at that. And we'll just keep going. I'll catch up with you in Round Rock or something. Hopefully we have no traffic. My fingers are crossed. Rolling. All right. We are near Georgetown or... Oh, Kobe. No. Where are we? Are we I lost track, man. We, uh, we're heading towards Round Rock. We're, or maybe we passed it. I don't know. I haven't seen the outlet mall yet. Um... However, in sport mode, I do want to say that we have actually increased our fuel economy to 27 mpgs. It's not as good as we were before, but you got to remember we fell down, and I was doing speeds like 103 just recently, 123, but, you know, the car feels absolutely planted and so confident, and it is like a Jetta version of a GSF. I I like it. Uh, Personally, though... um, If I needed a brand new car, let's just say my existing car was totaled and I need to figure out something to get under 30 grand, but I wanted something that performed well and had room and I didn't care that it didn't have a sunroof or vented seats (laughs) or radar crews. If I didn't care about that tech, I would, I would say, yeah, get the, uh, get the, uh, Jetta GLI. On the other hand, though, there are used cars on the market right now that that I that would appeal to me, and that would be in the same price range. But I think, in in general, like the Jetta has always been a very nice car to have, and it's better in this respect than the Golf GTI because the Golf is cringy, and we don't have a Tiguan R yet, and the Atlas is too damn big, and we just drove the Kia Telluride. I liked it. Did you like it? Yes. Okay. Oh, so, yeah. But you haven't driven one yet, so you don't really have a professional view on it, like a statement about it. So we'll keep it at that. Well, I've driven it off-road only. Okay. Uh, well, we can go watch <laughs> that video on your channel. There will be cars, or is that not on your channel? No, not, not that part. There's um, some outside footage of it. Um, okay. But I don't have any in-cabin stuff. But plenty of stuff. Um, I drove the Rolls-Royce Cullinan off-road. Yeah. Um, trying to think of what else uh there there's more off-road action in, in different vehicles on my channel that's right so be sure to go there and like and subscribe and leave a comment on his videos <laughs> uh and as far as this jetta gli yeah it's it's a no-brainer to me as far as the jetta family is i mean there's the base s with the manual if you're into that i don't really feel like i need a manual in this car you used to be able to get a manual gli in the previous generation up until that last year and then they like decontented it too which volkswagen does and it really pisses people off and and i'm kind of there with you like why did the first year have features and then they took them out as subsequent years go by i don't know why vw does that we do or do not have led headlights in here uh we have auto headlights we don't well we have an auto dimming mirror i don't know if the exterior mirrors are auto dimming it's an interesting combination as far as the way car is. I just wish it had a, a better system here. Uh, the nav the nav would be great, and satellite radio would be great. A Fender or uh, Beats, whatever the stereo is now, an upgraded stereo would be would be ideal in a GLI. It should just come fully loaded. One one thing I do like about this, and it's a little sort of behind the times or not as fancy as you can get in other VWs, modern VWs. I like the fact that this one still has the hard buttons. It's not as slick and as modern as, you know, the newer systems where it's all touchscreen yeah. and they still have this this little, you know, uh, rib there. But I, I like the fact that it has physical hard buttons. The funny thing is, if they had made this just a screen with a knob, this would be almost exactly like the car I loathe, which is the previous generation Toyota Corolla. Which is all shiny, and the button, the, even the knob was shiny, and you couldn't see it. Or at least I couldn't see it. And so it, it's weird because the Corolla has moved on, and the Jetta has moved on, and the Cruise is dead. And you know your options have basically gone up on the price scale, 
and I think if tech is important to you, this is not the car for you. You'd have to go down a little bit on a performance scale and get the SEL Premium, which is the 1.4, which was still decent. It just wasn't a beast like this. This is like a GSF, literally, of Jetta's. So we're almost near somewhere, I don't know, it feels like Georgetown. It's about a half hour from Austin. And the good news is the flight has been delayed. So we're no longer in a rush, but I, I do I do know that we we definitely, you know, we have an hour and 15 minutes to spare and we're only about a half hour away. So we, we made up time in this car effortlessly. I'm not fatigued. Are you fatigued? No, not at all. We're not Quite the out. opposite. You know, a three hour Blitzkrieg drive uh, <laughs> In, in this car, I think in any, on any condition road, in any state, on any freeway, it's capable. You know, you can kind of like stealthily get around traffic. I don't want to say like doing anything dangerous or reckless, but you, you can just pull out, pass, get back in, pass, get back in. It's only really when you get to stop and go traffic where I, I wish it had some of the autonomous capabilities, but you know, one day they'll get there. Well, hey, you know, I've got good news. Uh, looks like just in this time you've been talking, the fuel economy's gone up a little bit. Yeah, that's because we're doing the speed limit. We're doing 70-something. 70, 70 so bringing the speed back down, staying in sport mode, and the transmission is also in sport mode. So when you put it in sport for the uh, D, DSS or DCC, whatever it is, everything gets into sport mode. And I can always knock this back, and we're still in sport for the steering and the throttle response. Uh, and the uh, gear hold, but we're not in sport mode for the lower gear and the harder shift change. And you can control that anytime by pulling back on the stick. And because it's a dual clutch, you you have like a real feeling of oh, I'm in a manual. You just you just don't have that like that feeling of an actual manual where you're moving and rowing gears. But I do have paddles, and I haven't used them. I haven't needed to use them. Sometimes there's a delay when I put my foot down in sport mode versus when I'm in drive mode. So I've been I've been preferring to be here in sport on the DCC and then drive on the transmission setting. And it's been pretty good. It's been pretty good. So we'll catch up with you when we get to our destination, which is a new destination now, but still in Austin. <laughs> Yep, you see that right. We are completely stopped and the vehicle is in park right there. So the status is we have 80 mile range. We did 27.8 average, 215 miles, three and a half hours. So I'm pretty confident that this car is uh, really good at road trips. I do appreciate the ride quality. I wish it had a few things. We've talked about it several times. Um, I figured we'll do this time right now to walk around it and show you that I'm actually in a Jetta, or we're in a Jetta. <laughs> um, it's a pretty cool gray color. I don't remember the name, but it was right up there with that Kia Stinger we showed earlier while we were driving along. So I'm going to turn this off, and we're going to call this a done trip. I uh, forgot what time it was. Oh, it's about 15. Nice watch. About 1.15. Run it slow. Surprisingly, we're on the Hankook Ventus S1 Evo 3s. Evo Q. Yeah. Nice. Let's see if I can get a thumbnail here. Ding. And we've actually decided to go get lunch at a funny place because we have some time to get lunch so we're at salt and time and take a photo that's pretty cool it was fun I enjoyed it I do like the striping on the seats uh, yeah no vents back there either and no sunroof it's kind of stripped out but if you're looking for a, like a light no frills racer kind of sedan that's pretty cool and you see the diffusers down there Nice. And of course the key. Cool. Alright, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. 
Well, just when you thought my video was over, it's not. I am in the car averaging 33.3 MPGs now. And that's because I'm in Waco. There's that Twisted Burger place, not recommended by me, but whatever. There's Baylor Stadium over there. And it's just me in the car this time. Derek isn't in the car because I'm actually heading from Austin back to Dallas. I have to return the Jetta to my house so that Volkswagen can pick it up. I don't know why I'm pointing the camera at me. You can't see me. So let me just do this again. All right. We know this part. If you've seen, uh, I keep wanting to call it flip or flop, but it's whatever that show is on uh, with Chip and Joanna Gaines, whatever it was called. I forget now. Uh, you can see I'm averaging 69 miles an hour and 33.3 uh, MPG. So I'm doing much more of a relative, realistic, real-world speed now. And obviously I'm behind this truck in a construction zone, so that uh, those numbers are bound to change. But if I go to since start, you'll see even over uh, the period of leaving my house in Austin, I'm averaging 33 MPGs and... 64 miles an hour. The fuel economy here is very impressive. I figured I'd give you some bit of a more realistic, like less of a time crunch kind of road trip, which this is now. And if that doesn't make any sense, uh, basically the trip I did earlier in the daylight with Derek was to be in Austin by a specific time to get to the airport, which obviously ended up being moot because the flights got delayed, so it ended up being all for nothing. But going back home in Dallas, I'm just driving pretty much the regular way here in uh, Texas, like the speed limits vary between 65 and 75, and I'm getting really good fuel economy. And I think this is better than the last gen, the 7th, uh, the 6th? Yeah, the 6th generation uh, GLI. And so this is now the GLI uh, 35th anniversary, which has the same engine as the GTI, with even with the, the valves. So the previous generation GLI didn't have the same engine as the GTI from the Golf. It put out a little bit less horsepower. It had slightly different valve train, uh, actually specifically slightly different valves. Anyway, I, wanna, I don't like getting into that technical stuff. I just want to show you what this is like and give you this experience. I want to give you something that no other YouTube channel gives you, which obviously I love doing the road trips. I love doing this stuff for you guys and girls. So please bear that in mind. Uh, I do not get paid by Volkswagen. Derek and I do not get paid by manufacturers. None of us uh, automotive journalists get anything other than the vehicle with a full tank and insurance. Obviously it's their insurance. And it's just sort of like the full tank is the cost of doing business, obviously. So Bear that in mind, like food, fuel, uh, hotels, all the stuff that's required for a lot of travel that I do quite often is paid by nobody other than uh, what I would generate from YouTube, which obviously just barely pays my bills. So I'm not saying I want donations or anything, but I might start selling shirts. I don't know. If you're interested in that kind of thing, leave a comment below. Tell me what you're really interested in if you want anything. I'm willing to sign stuff, too, if I can. But for now, that lane's open. I'm going to go for it. I'm in comfort mode. This thing passes just fine. You can see the speed kicking up here. I'm going to show you comfort right there. It says comfort. So still in a construction zone. still averaging pretty decent. And then the trip computer shows since start and then overall, which is the extended period, which is looking really good too. Uh, yeah, overall, just like getting through. So I might touch base again when I get into Dallas. We'll see what those numbers look like. And thanks for watching. Well, before we get to Dallas and while it's dark out here, I want to show you something really cool. We have this ambient interior lighting, which is right there. And it runs through the interior, along the doors, in the front, and along the, uh, the uh, dash. 
It's kind of hard to pick up in the dark on a phone, but there you go. So the thing is, if I change the drive mode, right now we're in comfort, and you can see that by that label there. If I press down on this button and change it to Eco, the ambient lighting color changes to blue. So there's a different ambient lighting color for each drive mode, and it only is recognizable at night. And I do know that when I drove the Jetta SEL Premium that the, the instrument cluster would change too because it had the digital cockpit, which this does not have. This is traditional gauges. And in this car, I can tell you I do not miss the digital cockpit. I just, I like analog gauges. So this is fine for me. I do like the center display that has the trip computer. But if I change it from Eco to Comfort, the color changes again. And if I change it from Comfort to Normal, the color changes one more time to like a, a whitish color. And if we change it from Normal to Sport, it changes to Red. So it changes rapidly. And it's really cool. It's more noticeable in person than it is on this camera. Trust me. I think I'll go right here to cycle through. There's custom, which looks more like a Sam White. There's eco, comfort, normal, sport, custom, eco, comfort. So I've been doing comfort so far, and as we get closer to Dallas, I will get downtown and I'll show you the fuel economy numbers. So, yeah. Welcome to Dallas! The time is currently 1.05 a.m. And it's beautiful here right now at night. Really cool. Everything is well lit. And this is a good time to say, hey, this was a great car to drive. I wouldn't hesitate owning one. And look at the fuel economy. 34.6 with an average of 73 miles an hour. So the... Um, the car performed well, and I think it's because there are a few factors. Number one, and I'm not joking, it's cooler outside than it was in the last trip. It's 88 degrees, although it was about 84, uh, about an hour outside of Dallas. So it definitely was cooler, which I think is a big, big part of it. 14 degrees, whatever. It was 100 degrees, I think, during our trip of the day. So that, that could be a difference. Number two is there's no traffic. So we're just able to sail straight through. And number three, because of that, I'm not flooring it to pass people. So I'm not really whacking fuel into the vehicle's engine to pass at high speed. I'm just graduating, uh, gradually adding to the fuel to uh, like this to bring up speeds. So that's been easy to do because of this turbocharged engine. The turbos is right in the sweet spot for this car. So it's the combination of the dual clutch automatic, the seven speed, and the uh, the calibration of the turbo. Just the way everything spools up and kicks in here is really good. I'm not really a fan of the sport mode in the transmission, but the way it is working uh, in sport mode for the DSS or DCC dynamic traction control, and the difference between sport and comfort is it's very. Um, uh, apparent. It's very, it's obvious, basically. So I, I do want to say that they did a good job with the uh, switching between modes. There is a definite, definite, obvious change. It's not like some kind of weird voodoo going on. It's real. And yeah, thirty-four point seven now because we've kind of slowed down a little bit. Uh, Dallas, lovely, it's such a lovely place right now, and yeah, you might know this tunnel from when I opened up the Dodge Challenger uh, RT Scat back in here, there's nobody in here but me, wow, it's cool, um, oh, I was going to mention one thing, and I, oh yeah, so the uh, trip here, both directions, I believe, 
Yeah, definitely both directions. So Dallas to Austin, Austin to Dallas, 87 octane fuel. So it, it runs on the cheap stuff, and it returned this sort of performance. And I haven't really timed, you know, I'm not lap timing. I'm not doing much track stuff in this. I haven't actually. So what I'm saying is it feels like a fast car. It goes like a fast car. And I'm pretty impressed. They, they definitely have improved this generation over the previous one. I feel like they have kind of the same basis to it, except the, the real difference here is this interior. I complained in the last gen that the interior wasn't as good as the Golf, but now this interior is better than the Golf, which makes the Golf look cringy. Can't really see much, obviously, because it's uh, nighttime. But that's, that's my uh, impression, so I definitely want to thank Derek for riding along, and I want to thank all of you for virtually riding along. I think this trip has proven a lot that, yes, this car can beat the 32 MPG stat on the window sticker. Yes, this is a sub $30,000 car that performs well. Yes, I really did say this is a Lexus GSF of Volkswagen Jettas. And this is definitely a car to put on your list, on your short list. Actually, this is your number one car to look at in the sub 30k range this should be the first car to look at and then everything under that list would be t a variety of different cars, I would still put the Fiat 124 Spider on there totally different thing, I understand uh, there is the Toyota Corolla the new, brand new 2020 Corolla but you'd have to get the loaded one and I don't think people really understand that but from my perspective and the way I drive and where I live the air conditioning is great in here. The ride quality is great. It's a tad on the noisy side. The stereo is not awesome. but And there's no sunroof. So I've gone over those things before. But it's just like you're paying sub 30 k So if you really wanted more than that, I would say, okay, change your budget. Go to 40 k But what are you going to get at 40 k that's better than this? Just the features that you think you want. So... 40k though gets you into a completely different ballpark of vehicles and they're going to be more more complicated I guess in a way they're going to have the radar crews and all that stuff so this this is just a great package and it's turnkey and if, and if you can get a good lease on it then just lease one or uh, buy one I, I would say you, you can't go wrong. You cannot go wrong with the GLI. And this is the 35th anniversary edition. There is an Autobahn trim of the GLI. And yeah, it's getting really late. I'm getting really tired. So I'm definitely, definitely, most definitely going to cut the video short here. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, share with your friends. Um, I hope you really enjoyed this. So, yeah, see you in the next video. Actually, I've been driving three days in a row back and forth, Austin, Dallas, Austin, Dallas. So, Kia Telluride, Volkswagen, Jetta, GLI, 35th anniversary. And the next trip is the Jeep Wrangler Sahara Unlimited. Might be the might be the Rubicon, but I believe it's the Sahara. Um, I, might, I might have to double check that. But more stuff coming up, and thank you, thank you, thank you.